Finally, 5 million of Pakistan's 25 million Pashtuns have equal rights as citizens. The Pashtuns are Pakistan's largest ethnic minority. They speak Pashto and live according to Pashtunwali, a social code that values honor, hospitality, and revenge. 20% of Pashtuns live in Pakistan's federally administered tribal areas, a strategic area on the border with Afghanistan, known as FATA. Until this year, FATA was left outside of the Pakistani constitution and was governed by tribal laws. In May, FATA was merged into Pakistan and its residents became full citizens. Called the most dangerous place in the world by the US and a lawless land by Pakistanis, FATA has been the target of many army operations to rid it of violent elements. To understand why Pakistan is paying attention to FATA now, let's look at the region's history and its geostrategic importance. The mistreatment of tribal Pashtuns goes back to the 19th century. From British India onwards, tribal Pashtuns have been isolated from and dehumanized in mainstream society. Fata was called the excluded areas and was cut off from the rest of British India. On the one hand, state law did not apply to the region. On the other, they were subject to a harsh set of special laws since 1876. These laws denied the tribes legal rights and imposed collective punishment. This was all enforced by British appointed political agents with absolute power who paid off tribal elders to control them. A Supreme Court justice from Pakistan described the true purpose of these laws. The legal system imposed by the British was intended to rule the masses through a class of loyals from the area, thus ostensibly depicting a policy of non-interference in their centuries-old system. Although in fact the object was to keep them away from a universally recognized judicial system and instead give them a sugar-coated legal device. And these laws stayed in place after the British left. During the partition of 1947, Pakistan and India became separate countries, and this region became known as FATA. Pakistan spent most of its time and resources towards the Indian border and did not pay that much attention to the tribal areas. As a result, FATA became the least developed area in Pakistan. It has a literacy rate of 33% and 60% of the population lives below the poverty line. The existence of the tribal belt on the margins of Pakistan meant that the region was vulnerable to infiltration by smugglers and fighters. It wasn't until the 1970s when FATA's unique location and legal status began to be exploited by external powers. The 1979 Soviet invasion of Afghanistan shone a spotlight on FATA. The US, fearing Soviet expansion, partnered with Pakistan and Saudi Arabia to fund the Mujahideen, fighters who would be used to push back the Soviets. The Mujahideen began recruiting and training fighters in the tribal areas. Although they defeated the Soviets, there were unintended consequences. Uh, recently we have uh, obtained hard evidences of uh, the Pakistani militia's involvement alongside with the Taliban. They have committed serious incursions inside the Afghan territory and they have enabled the Taliban to move towards the capital. The different factions began fighting for power in Afghanistan. One of these factions was the Taliban, backed by Pakistan. While Fatah was an asset during the Afghan war, it would soon become a liability with the rise of anti-Americanism. Our war on terror begins with Al-Qaeda, but it does not end there. It will not end until every terrorist group of global reach has been found, stopped, and defeated. Conditions worsened when the U.S. launched the so-called War on Terror and invaded Afghanistan in 2001, driving the Taliban out to take refuge in Fatah. Under U.S. pressure, Pakistan publicly abandoned support for the Taliban and allowed U.S. forces into the tribal areas. However, the Taliban took advantage of Fatah's unregulated status and established safe havens along the border. A prolonged period of conflict in Fatah began with fighting between the Pakistani military, U.S. forces, and fighters loyal to various groups raging on. Meanwhile, the tribes were trapped in the fighting. More than 1,000 tribal elders were killed, deteriorating the traditional tribal structure. Thousands of Pashtuns disappeared without a trace. 
the conflict also displaced more than a million tribespeople and destroyed hundreds of local houses, schools, and businesses. Throughout, Pakistan viewed and justified the violence as a Pashtun problem, but this view hides the true drivers behind the issue. The tribal Pashtuns haven't had any political influence, access to media outlets, or self-determination from the time they were under the British-era laws. Even when the Pakistani president made reforms in 2011 to protect the elderly and the youth, the military reversed these changes. Security forces gave themselves the power to arrest any tribal Pashtun on the basis of suspicion or complaint. Do you believe that civil liberties in this country are being eroded in your hunt for the Taliban? I mean, you have to go after a monster. So, what do you do? And I think the state of Pakistan is taking care that this does not impinge on the civil liberties of people as much as it is possible. Even though the establishment was determined to maintain the status quo, Pashtuns across Pakistan continued to publicize the problems in Fata. <laughs> In Fatah, 62% of youth are affected by violence. Many tribal Pashtuns moved out of Fatah to escape the conflict. But even in cities, tribal Pashtuns are targeted, especially by police who accuse them of being part of the Taliban. The kind of racialized tropes about Pashtuns is widespread in Pakistan and justifies a lot of violence by the military, but also by um, a lack of empathy and a lack of knowledge about what's been going on in the rest of the country. Lawyers, activists, journalists, and scholars demanded that parliament make reforms in Fatah. But their calls were ignored until this year. It was extraordinary when thousands of Pashtuns organized to protest decades of killings, disappearances, and mistreatment by the state. The peaceful, grassroots protests were led by the new and young Pashtun Protection Movement, which captures the demands and feelings of tribal Pashtuns. To settle the unrest and to control the border, Pakistan merged Fatah into the neighboring province. Though integration was a crucial step, plenty of work remains to be done. The tribesmen will have to uh, think uh, about their system, about their um, self-rule, about their legal system, and about their share and participation in the mainstream. Will these steps improve life in Fatah? Only if peace is restored first.